Hi, I'm Jeff Lawrence, Managing Director of Ronford Baker Engineering. The company started in January 1966 by two gentlemen by the name of Harry Baker, who was the engineer, and Ron Ford. Um, the company initially started as Ron Ford Limited and after about four or five years became Ron Ford Baker. Uh, Ron Ford and Harry Baker parted company after about seven years, um, but we still kept the name and Harry has since passed on and Ron has passed on and the company I've recently purchased off of Harry's daughter and obviously still kept the name because the tripods and heads are known worldwide as Ronford. So we don't change anything. We manufacture all of our equipment in the factory in Kings Langley. In fact, we moved from Watford just 12 months ago. Uh, having been there for nearly 47 years, uh, we've now been in a new, larger, more modern premises. We were at one point, uh, our origins are in a farm building, which are very low ceilings and not very economic with the heat. You might just as well have left the doors open with the heating on. We specialise in uh, camera support for the film and television industry. Anything from the floor upwards, track, dollies, uh, rolling spiders, tripods, fluid heads, camera accessories, accessories grip accessories, lots of specialised grip equipment, one-offs, uh, you know, bespoke parts for certain customers from anything these days from DSLR cameras upwards. A lot of our stuff is bespoke and then sometimes that becomes a line. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that most of our stuff is hand finished uh, to a high standard. We use high quality materials. Uh, most of our current fluid heads are built from solid blocks as opposed to die castings. Um, therefore slightly heavier but much more durable. Well, we, we've never been in the lightweight end of things. Um, so we've always got this strength and quality build, durability, take it anywhere. Uh, I think one of our logos at one point was take it anywhere, film anything. And I understand another company is using that logo now, but um, that's what happens with it. It just goes. We initially were, 40 years ago, were asked, do we have to winterize the fluid heads as we do film cameras? And the answer's always been no. Our plus and minus temperature range on the fluid heads is, is quite good and never needs touching. You can go out of the desert and up to a mountain with snow on the top and you know, plus and minus 40 degrees is not a problem with any of the fluid operations in the head. Obviously things like tripods work in that temperature anyway. And most of the accessories are just bolt on things that temperature really doesn't affect. Our customer base is uh, in the UK is all of the rental houses are big users of our equipment and uh, in the UK a lot of uh, equipment is privately owned either by camera, camera operators, focus pullers, grips, uh, etc. Second AC, first ACs, all, all of those people will buy their own equipment because they, in, in the UK, they can charge that onto the film providing they have permission. Outside the UK, most of the stuff is sold directly to dealers who then sell it on to rental houses and private individuals. We do export all the way around the world. I, I don't know anywhere where our stuff hasn't been um, exported to, but certainly do a lot with the Far East, um, China, the USA, Canada, and all of Europe. We have dealers in all of those major countries. I don't think you'll go on a feature film that hasn't got something of ours on it somewhere along the line, but recent feature films Two that have not been shown yet is Ronin 47 and Hercules, uh, third one Dracula. Uh, they are all just in the process of finishing shooting or just finished shooting. Uh, films like War Horse, Skyfall, as I say, I don't think you'll find a, a feature film that doesn't have something of ours on it somewhere on the line. We aim at high-end quality on all, all of our products using um, High, good quality materials, stainless steels, aluminiums, aircraft specifications on that, acetals, materials. There is very little in the way of steel, but if it is, it's, then it's dull chrome plated. All of our fittings these days are stainless steel. Um, it, it brings up a nice quality product. And the last thing we need is stuff to come back to us. We want to put a label on it, get paid for it, gone, don't want to see it again. And that's, that's a better way than sending it out and having it come back in another 
three months, six months, something like that with problems that, that recur. So we tend to design on the durable strength side of things rather than uh, making things ultra light. Well, you still need a solid head at the moment, even if you use any of the um, current cameras like the F55, the Sony F55, the Alexa or the Red Epic starts as a small four kilo box and then finishes up at 25, 30 kilos by the time you've got two monitors, an Optimo 24 to 290 on it, a codex box, um, batteries, it just, they just build and build and build and they just seem to throw everything on the camera. So you still need a solid uh, head to start with. Features on the fluid head, certainly we put environmental seals in all of the moving parts to uh, avoid the ingress of water from rain showers um, and dust. A um, lot, of, lot of our uh, owner operators are wildlife cameramen, so they're constantly in desert and sandy conditions on beaches, etc. And we certainly seem to stand up better than most of the other manufacturers on that front. Uh, tripods have been renowned now. We've been making tripods for more than 40 years. Um, so we think we know what we're doing there. We tend to use aluminium alloy tubes, aluminium castings. We do, however, uh, can provide carbon fiber tubes, but uh, the actual weight in the tripod is in the castings, not in the tubes. Uh, I personally don't like working with carbon fiber because every time you go and buy it, it's how much? You know, very expensive stuff. One of our first Atlas heads was used on, a, on the remake oh, 10 years ago of Flight of the Phoenix, which was filmed in Namibia. Um, the, the story is that an airplane crashes in the desert and gets rebuilt. Um, they were using uh, wind machines constantly blowing sand at the head. And the owner of this particular head, he called me and I said, Jamie, put it in the box, bring it back here. We will service it free of charge and we wanted to check everything out. There were a few grains of sand in the bottom outside the seal. So it proved that it did its job there. We currently have probably five or six companies have heads of ours that we've not totally waterproofed, but given some kind of uh, waterproofing so that things don't seal up. And recently we were sent a picture. In fact, I'll send you the picture is of a tripod attached to the underneath of an iceberg with a fluid four on it, which is one of our older heads and the camera on that. So it was just taken like this, put underneath an iceberg and attached to it. And that comes back about every three or four years for a check over and service. Uh, so pretty good on, on either extremes of water and high temperature and wind. Yeah, so we're very pleased with that side of things. Um, we did, however, get a, a bit of a dessert, disturbing picture once. A guy said to me, we've broken our tripod, can you fix it? So I said to him, yeah, we can fix anything. So he, he said to me, okay, I'll send you some pictures. They were filming in the tundra in northern Canada. And the, instead of spending five days getting equipment across the tundra, they decided that they would drop it via parachute from a light aircraft. So they did, but the parachute didn't open. And uh, this poor little tripod was spread over 100 meters in <laughs> lots and lots of little bits. So funny, but I did say we can fix it. So, so we had a good laugh about that. That was, that was quite funny. Yeah. Well, the Atlas 40 is a brand new head. Well, I'd expect you still to have that in 20 to 30 years time. It may need servicing now and again, but our belief is if it isn't broke, don't fix it. So we, we tend to grease, oil, lubricate, whatever, certain products, but other things, if it's working, leave it alone. Um, because people who don't know what they're doing are gonna cause more trouble than good. Yeah, we have a couple of patents running at the moment. One is on the counterbalance system of the Atlas fluid heads. Um, so the, the patent on that has been running for about six or seven years. And we also, similar time, have a, a patent on the uh, tapered dovetail fitting on the bazooka bases. Usually the first question when you meet people after three or four months is what's new? And uh, we're bloody good, but we're not magicians. <laughs> we can't just tap a ma magic wand and produce equipment like that. It does take time to develop. We are currently looking at other 
product at the moment, which I can't tell you much about, but uh, we are looking into different avenues in the, in the current field. We're driven to build all of this specialised equipment by our customers. They, they, demand, they come in with their demands and tell us they need this, they need that, they need the other, and we design and build things to suit those, their needs. And it's from an end user's point of view that um, is what we build. We're more than happy to show people around and we're very proud of what we produce because we're um, a very small company and we, we build equipment that's in a niche market. We build quality equipment that has um, durability, longevity. It's, uh, it's the way that we've been brought up. Don't make it so that it lasts two years, make it so that it lasts 20 years. Uh, that's always been at the, at the forefront. And we're extremely pleased to show people around our place. In fact, we probably show somebody around every day to some extent, whether he may be a driver, he may be a trainee or something like that, that go, wow, wow, what's that, you know? Um, they're, very, they're very easily persuaded youngsters who've not seen the inside of a machine shop before. So, yes, we're very pleased to see people and show them around.